Welcome to the 10 Acre Woods. My name's Mark and today we're going to talk about a few things. One question I had is what kind of dogs do I have? Do I have any dogs? So this is Toby. He is a West Highland White Terrier, right? Where's your mate? Here's, uh, here's Atlas. He is a Bernese Mountain Dog. And I don't know, oh there's Maggie over there. And Maggie is a female West Highland White Terrier. Uh, so these are the dogs that we have. Uh, on the farm here and uh, we often get some other dogs in. We had one, I meant to film him in a uh, video a couple weeks ago. Uh, he is, uh, his name's Goliath and he's a Newfoundlander. So we babysit him from time to time uh, and then we've got a couple other dogs that come over from time to time. So that's the dog thing. Now today what we're going to talk about is uh, we're going to start up our incubator. So that's exciting. We're going to fill that up and the farrier slash vet tech came out uh, during the week so Tara has an update on that she gave me some information on it but I'll let her uh, give you the first hand information on that Tara's been cleaning up the barn and the shop area getting ready for the incubator doing a little bit of spring cleaning uh, so we're going to uh, head in there and uh, we've been out at it, at it all day as well getting that incubator all cleaned up and ready to go Ooh, it's nice and warm in here. So last week I had pointed out uh, this area here that was uh, filled with all kinds of stuff. So Tara's been uh, tidying that up so it's all ready. We're going to put down newspaper here. We had hay or straw that was down there before, but you have to watch because the plexiglass is fairly smooth, you could get splay leg because the chicks can't stand up on it. Uh, and they just can't get that traction. So here is the incubator. So we've got this all set up, uh, ready to uh, get the water in it. So here is the inside of it. These racks here take, well, there's these for when they're hatching out, and then these guys here for the eggs. So it's the three racks, they just slide in like this. And you've got your uh, your eggs in there, so it does rock back and forth. There's a motor that moves this chain here. Uh, now, a common question is people have been asking, uh, which way does this fan blow? Does it blow in or does it blow out? Well, the heater's behind it here, and the air actually blows out across it. And then there is a humidity sensor and a temperature sensor up in that area here. Now here are the eggs. So we've got, uh, how many dozen we got, Tara? Yeah, 72 and 6 dozen, so... 72 eggs and 6 dozen? So. Now this, we thought, I think we did see somewhere that people hatched out store-bought eggs. So we picked these eggs up, I think they were, what was it, $3 for two dozen? Yeah. So we thought, huh, let's give that a shot. So we're going to try them out and then we've got a mixture of all kinds of different uh, barnyard mix type eggs. So that's going to go in there. We're going to get the water in. So this is the water system here. This is just a jug, the funnel on it, hole cut in the top of it, and then it just goes back down into so cool. the machine and there is a float valve on here. So we'll get that set up and ready to go. And we'll be uh, off to the races. Uh, one other thing, I put the temperature up here. We do have the wood burning stove over there pumping away, but we do have a heater down here. So we're going to have uh, a consistent temperature in here. Uh, it doesn't have to be too, too warm, but something to take off the chill because it will be fairly warm in there. So I've put this temperature gauge here to show the temperature. And I thought, oh, I'm going to put a camera on the ceiling pointing down at it so we can actually monitor it while we're in the house. Now, speaking of the cameras, here is the setup. So here's the pen out, uh, out with the girls in it. And I have the outdoor shelter area. You can see we got sheep. Uh, there's Willow here. 
and looks like uh, either Barry or Shanzi over there. And where we go, we got that one, that one. Uh, this is Fernando and Sheldon. It because of the the size of this screen, it doesn't show the whole thing. So there's Fernando strutting his stuff there. And this is Lucy and the rabbits and uh, some of the mini gods in there. And the outdoor camera. Let's see some geese down here. Pond still frozen. Uh, and then here is the shot that I have. So you can see the temperature there. And then we'll be able to see all the parameters on the front of the machine. Uh, we may even be able to, because there's a window on the front, we may even be able to see them hatching in there, but uh, I'll be able to um, possibly even hook up another camera, because I have this channel here that's blank. Uh, so hook up that camera to show the inside of it, so that we get some, some hatching. Now I have done some videos in the past. Uh, it was two years ago, I think, I did a video, so you can go back and you can watch those. It's the cleaning of this unit, it's the maintenance, uh, I did some rewiring of it. I had to replace this because it was just a tin container and it started leaking after the first uh, year or first season. So this is a lot more robust, fits in there nicely, and it's just a Rubbermaid container. Here we are, in the barn. So all that's cleared out. The incubator was sitting here and now is gone. So we're getting this area all cleaned up. We want to actually clean the walls and then paint so that we get a nice uh, good finish and be less dusty in here. So what do we, we got Lucy and the little mini gods in there. We have Fernando and Sheldon and somebody said, uh, um, when uh, when they saw him running around in circles, they said, you should take your goat in and get him checked by the vet, because they shouldn't be doing that. Uh, well, Sheldon's a special case. A spe uh, the vets actually gave him a 0% chance of survival in the spring. Uh, so if you want to more, know more about Sheldon, go back to last spring's video. I did a few videos, well, three, one on each of the mamas. And then a little special episode on Sheldon. Your horns are getting big. So he's, uh, he's stunted, but he's doing really well. And then, of course, Fernando. Fernando, we got to get you some girls, don't we? Yeah. He doesn't usually pay too much attention to the female turkeys. Uh, so here's the soon-to-be mamas. She's, she's, uh, she's dropped. Yeah, she's got a little bit of a hollow, yeah. hollowness in this area here. So it, it does look like she has dropped slightly. Now we will be starting the live stream uh, probably either Sunday night or Monday afternoon, evening. I, I haven't quite figured out that yet, but I've got, I've just got to run another test run on it. Make sure everything's good. And uh, we'll get that up and, and running. Yeah, she just loves that. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. Maybe no, not. She was going to go ahead, <laughs> So they're all getting along well in here. We'll monitor them uh, as I showed you from the camera. We'll be able to watch them, and I'm sure Tara will be watching them regularly throughout the entire process. So likely due last year, they were born, what was it, the 13th, 13th wasn't it? 12th, 13th, I think it was. So it's going to be a couple weeks into into the month. So don't think that uh, they're going to they're going to have them right away. It's going to take a little bit of time. <laughs> oh, Petunia, is that good? Nice scratch. Sorry, it just feels so open. Yeah, without that incubator there. I'm happy with this decision. So Lucy, I was just talking to Tara about uh, getting her outside because she's going to uh, be going outside soon. Right, Luz? Yes. Uh, but we want to make sure it's warm enough uh, outside. So it was about minus 12 the other day Celsius. So we want to make sure that uh, she's not going to get a chill, especially this time of year when it is, woo, we got some running, <laughs> when, uh, when it's damp outside. 
So we don't want her to get a chill and, uh, and, and get sick. So she'll probably be going out within the next uh, week or two. It's, uh, it's taken a while for spring to take hold, but I'm sure it will soon enough. <laughs> They want some hay. I'll give them some hay to entertain me. Well, hi, Turbo. <laughs> Mummy's gonna get some hay. <laughs> oh yeah. So, uh, so yeah. Go for it. <laughs> so this week we had a farrier come. Uh, so she did. <laughs> The girl's feet, the ponies, Willow and Shadow. Uh, no, remember we were talking about Shadow lying down uh, and we thought it was the pregnancy. Uh, apparently, Tara overfed them. Uh, Shadow, the farrier that we have is actually, she's used to be a vet tech as well. So, what? <laughs> so, what? Uh, She's really knowledgeable with the animals, and I love her for that because she really just hands on, especially with the ponies and the horses. I don't, he, what do you want? He wants to go. Wow, you had but something. I, I, they didn't have their stuff this morning because I just got them on me. Anyways, um, so her opinion is that Willow is pregnant. She looks pregnant because she looks like she's got a beach ball in her gut, and uh, Willow is sore because shadow or sorry shadow shadow is sore um is a little bit sore because tara overfed her um it happens oh it's very ow who was that oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so this is how you this is how we put our roosters in our in their place <laughs> so he pecked me and he got me in the back of the leg <laughs> so you see him twitching it means he's still got feist. He's fighting it. You want him to relax so his head's down. You want him to just give in. Yeah. And then he'll run away when we put him back down again. <laughs> he's trying to dominate. <laughs> and it, they'll do it to all animals. He's fighting it. <laughs> And it just, it's just my way of showing them. People can't grab a shovel, they, they whack them, they hit them, they kick them. Um, this is the way that you show that you are dominant. So he's still tell, he's like, he's like, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. And it's spring too. So there's a lot going on. But they're not allowed. They are not allowed to hit humans at all. Is he done? So he's obviously uh, alpha out here. If he come after me, yeah. <clears throat> well, put him down, see what he does. He should run away. <laughs> Sh shake the alpha out of him. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Yes, I'm your friend. I'm the boss. Yes. Yes. So we pick him up and we hold him. He's not. He's... <laughs> I'll put him down. See what see what happens. I think I say he'll run away. Yeah. Ah. Uh, nice. What's he gonna do? <laughs> Stand your ground. Don't run. When you run, you toy. Yeah, if you run away, you run, then you become a toy. Then, uh, then yeah. you're telling them that you're scared of them. <laughs> okay, so okay. back to what we were talking okay. about. So in a nutshell, the, uh, the vet tech. What are you? You're shedding. They're shedding so bad. Um, Willow, in the opinion of the farrier, and I agree. She's pregnant. Shadows overweight. What we figure happened was you're supposed to feed them 1.5% of their body weight in hay. Um, but we were feeding the goats and chicken, like the sheep and everything, their oats and stuff out here. And they used to guard it. Um, so it's, it's not, uh, it's very common with the smaller, with the ponies and stuff. Uh, we've had a few in the past, that's why we've gotten them. 
So I feel pretty bad that now one of mine is overweight. Well, and last they're year bunny. they're not like they're well, not. and last year because of the uh, the the drought, the last oh, two right. years because we haven't had any uh, rain or a lot of rain. Yeah, the farrier was saying that the hay that was came off the field last year was higher in sugar um, than it should have been uh, because of the the lack of rain. Uh, also, um, you, some of you may have noticed Marley's eye. Uh, we are. Oh yeah. We yeah, they've been starting to go further and further into the bush. Why don't they I don't go in the pond. I saw them behind the pond. And now hey, they're hey, starting hey. to. Pacas! <laughs> hey, Pacas! They are getting used to calling them again. Also, they, they, they weren't out walking around. They didn't have to go get their food because it was winter. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, Marley's. I know, I'm all over the place. Marley's eyes. I picked up a, pr a prescription uh, for him. Uh, we are going to try one last prescription. Uh, it's higher and it's got steroids in it to try to fix his eyes. Um, apparently, there is only one vet in all of Manitoba that has ever done the eye surgery. So I want to give it every last bit before I send him in. Uh, and it's just his eyelids are flipped. Like, not flipped, they're rotated in. So the eyelashes irritate his eyes and that's what makes the goo and, and whatnot. So. We'll do our best. Here. Look at him. Hi, Barry. You want to be on camera? Where's your ears? Where's your ears, buddy? Hi. Barry. Barry. How come you're not out with the girls? Hi, Barry. How are you, Barry? Hi, Barry. What? <laughs> It's not always. <laughs> he thinks there's going to be some in there every time he checks. Come here, Packers! Here they come. Hannibal! Hanny! Hey! I, I got no yeah. apples, Hanny! <laughs> Who had. You had the apple this morning. Did he have one? Yeah. Yeah, I had a couple. I, I had a couple after the farrier. I had a couple apples. And I go to grab the apples after the farrier because like, they did a good job, right? And there's they're a lot more calmer now back here. And the, sh Sherry, the farrier, she looks at me and she goes, <laughs> <laughs> "No treats, <laughs> no treats." But Hi, how Paula. can we resist, right, Bear? Paula. <laughs> Hi, Paula. <laughs> hey, oh. <laughs> Come on in, guys. Oh, they're like, what's what's happening here? So, um, I did call the vet about coming out and do a pregnancy test on everybody. Um, basically, she's like, they can't really tell unless they do an internal. I'm not going to put them through that. Uh, so Sherry and I were joking. We are like, well, and we'll see them. They'll, they'll arrive and it'll be a surprise. <laughs> Don't kick. But they do. They're like, it's a... <laughs> So no guarantees. Nope. There is a possibility that Shanzi and or Paula are pregnant, but uh, and it would have been from this little boy here, likely. Yeah. How you tell alpaca weight? It's really hard because of their uh, amount of fur they have. Um, but it's their backbone. Barry's always struggle uh, keeping weight on in the winter. Um, he's always got. So we we give him extra. Are you having problems? And again, what is cool or interesting is when the, our vet actually has alpacas. And he said they're actually healthier on the thin side than they are over, like, like, like it's what they're used to in their climate. <clears throat> and here's Bronwyn. People keep asking, so did the black sheep have any lambs? No. <laughs> no. Bronwyn was just toying with us so I she could she get just, yes. uh, get a room inside for the winter. You think? You know. <laughs> How are the piggies doing? They're sleeping. Oh, sorry. What? <laughs> so back inside here, I just want to show you the startup of this unit here. We want to add the eggs tomorrow, 
but we want to make sure that it's stable and it's running good. So we usually do that for, you know, 12, 24 hours. Uh, make sure it's running consistently, it's up to speed. Uh, we put the eggs in and then we uh, slide the trays in and away we go. And I don't know if you heard, but we are going to be grandparents and we've decided to call ourselves Lolly oh, yeah. and Pop. And so that we're is going to lollipops. What, what religion is our religion? What? Uh, Nothing, it's just for fun. Yeah, but it's isn't it Ukrainian? No. Nah. Oh, no, okay. it's just funny. Yeah, so. Lolly, Pop. So we've uh, we've done fostering, and one of our foster daughters is having uh, a child. So Tara decided that she didn't want to be just grandma and grandpa. So she looked into it, and so she's going to be Lolly, and I'm going to be Pop. pop. So Lolly Pop. We're going to Lolly Pops. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, she's in the hospital. Oh, is she? Yeah, she's actually in right now. <clears throat> so, All right. Yay! So, more babies. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, back to where I was going with this. The water in here. So we live in the country. Uh, we have well water. We have minerals in our well water. So we don't want to take the water straight off the tap out in the barn because, of course, you're going to get calcium buildup and all that good stuff. So we have a water softener in the house. So I grabbed the jug and this jug should be enough to, uh, to, to put it up to the minimum level. We do have markings on this container here showing where our maximum and minimum values are for, uh, for a 24 hour period. So I'm gonna pour this in and hopefully I have no leaks. Okay, so we're basically at our minimum value, and that's pretty much where we are. We put in another one uh, just to bring it up to a speed, but this should be enough to get this running. Okay, so my float valve in here, because we went through and cleaned it, the float valve is uh, set incorrectly. So I'm just going to make that adjustment. So I had to go out and get some more water, go back to the house and get some more water. It wasn't quite enough. So I think I've made the adjustment uh, correctly here. Uh, it's just covering the, covering the element, which is what we want to see because, of course, you don't want to burn out the element. You want to always make sure that it's covered uh, with, uh, with water. So I did pour it in there. I topped up a little bit in here, but I can see it's still running, or it was still running a minute ago. So it's going to fill up to that level, so that's good. So the next stage is to turn it on. Now with this unit, as soon as you plug it in, I think the fan, yeah, the fan starts spinning as soon as you, you plug it in and it's not hooked up to the, uh, hook not, uh, not hooked up to the, the main breaker. <clears throat> so that's good. So we have our lighting, which should come on. So there we go. I added this extra LED lighting last two years ago uh, so that uh, when we have the chicks hatching out, you can clearly see them down here on the bottom as well. And that's what, where we put the yellow one into. So we're not going to put these in yet. So these will go in tomorrow. We'll load them up with the eggs. And then of course, uh, after uh, when they're ready for hatching, we will take all the eggs out and we will put them in these trays and then they will go into their respective area. We will leave the turn segment off so that they were there sitting in this position and then we'll uh, let them hatch. And, and I may at that point put a camera in there to capture some of it. I, I've done that in the past, as I had mentioned. So we're gonna leave this out. I'm gonna put it over here because it's safer. Make sure you put things back to where you found them. <laughs> okay, so that's that. So there we go. So I'm going to shut this down, uh, close it, I meant to say. I'm going to turn it on. So the main breaker here, now it's going to tell me that there's a low alarm. So you should be able to just hit the down button and then it will uh, silence the alarm. Now it's telling me I have uh, an alarm here, which of course my set value is not correct. My set value is 60. So I'm going to go in and turn that up 
to 100. There we go. We're going to set that. And I did it wrong. I didn't hit OK. It's been, uh, it's been two years since we've used this incubator, so I have to kind of get back in. So OK. And then humidity is at 50%. That's what I want. OK. So now we are uh, set at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. We're currently at 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Our set value for the humidity is at 50. We're at 38% humidity. So what this is telling me is there's two heaters. So both heaters are on to bring that up to temperature. Once it gets within a couple degrees, then it shuts one of the heaters off and then inches, it inches its way up to that temperature. Uh, over here it says wet. So this green light is on saying wet. That just means that the humidity element uh, inside the container is on, heating up the water, bringing that humidity up. If the temperature gets too high, there is an exhaust fan on the back of the unit that turns on and expelling air out um, and allowing other air to go in through the door chamber. So that's why I want to keep kind of a relatively even temperature inside the building so that we don't have really cold air going in there. We want uh, some kind of um, standard, uh, I, I figure probably only needs to be about eight or 10 degrees in here. It shouldn't be too bad. Uh, and that's it. So now we're just gonna leave this. Uh, I did plug the unit into over there, which I think uh, is smart because if I remember correctly, we had plugged it in back in here and I think it blew the breaker because I think it's on with the yard light or something else. Um, plus I'd hate for that uh, camera system to drop off because if that happens and if I'm at work, the live stream is going to go down and you're going to have to wait till I get home to uh, start it back up again because Tara's not going to know how that, uh, how that works. So hopefully uh, all goes well with that and it's not at, uh, doesn't, nothing happens at those uh, exciting moments. <laughs> uh, so that's it. So we're going to check in here in the morning. Uh, I'll monitor it versus, uh, via the closed circuit uh, monitoring system that I have with the camera up here. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it, and if all's good, we'll be loading eggs in the morning. So we're uh, putting the eggs in the trays of the incubator, and we're going to wait on the quail eggs because they are 16 days to hatch, and the chicken eggs are 21 days. So we're going to time it out because you have to change the humidity from 50% up to 60% uh, at the end of the hatch. So we want to make sure that both eggs are at the same stage when we do that. Oh my god, these are all monstrous. <laughs> Look at these eggs. Look at how big they are. Oh yeah. These are holy. You can ask her what she feeds her chickens. These are all offspring of ours. So this, I, a couple years ago, I gave her barnyard mix eggs. And so now she's given me back barnyard egg, eggs to hatch. Let's put the big ones in the middle so we can surround them by little ones. So. Yeah, and you leave them, you can see some of them are dirty, so you want to leave them, you don't want to scrub them and clean them because they do have a uh, membrane on them. Uh, so some people say it doesn't matter, uh, we go by not cleaning them. Okay, so that's that one that's loading. This one's uh, doing good, we're down to 10 degrees, 11 degrees Celsius, and the heater has kicked on, so that seems to be the temperature it's uh, remaining in here. Now, one question I've had about this incubator, and I already did it just now, um, resetting the egg turning times and the hatching days. Something I realized that I didn't uh, pick up the camera and turn it back on, I made the adjustment. You'll notice the incubator is set at 60% relative humidity. Uh, I clearly set it to 50% uh, the day before in the last segment. What had happened is when I hit the up and down arrow to reset the turning and the uh, hatching days counter, it actually reset to default settings. So that's why in this shot it shows 60% relative humidity, where in the last uh, shot I had set it to 50%. Uh, there's an up arrow and a down arrow here and you just want to hold them both 
for about three to four seconds and it'll beep and then it resets this area here. Tray number two, looking good. Depends on, I don't know what her... Uh, like it's her mix to roosters to yes. Um, Looks but a little you, you full. You can usually count on eighty <laughs> percent. Look at the size of these. I ones. know. I know they're <laughs> Ask her what she's feeding her chickens. They're kind of like goose eggs. Stero so, steroids. <laughs> a cool thing too is you see how it's broken. If it was if it was broken and just cr or just cracked and the membrane not broken, I think the membrane's broken on this one. You can actually just take wax. And, and melt a candle wax over it and seal it, and it will still hatch. This one you won't because the membrane's broken. But if the membrane's not broken, Where then you, you can. Um, yeah, so those ones are, these ones are blues and browns. A little bit of green, and then these ones are really green. So yeah. these are from two different people. So these ones here are from Chrissy, if you guys remember the baby doll sheep. Those are Chrissy's. She's even labeled them. She's a good girl. Mm -hmm. Look, she's even dated them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she? we noticed that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there is dates on them. And, and these are from Becky. So these ones are the offspring of all ours. Because she got eggs from us years ago. All right. In they go. Here we go. Just watch the zip tie there. You have to kind of lift it up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so this is fully underneath the water, so that's good. Thank you, ladies. This was like uh, they gave, they donated the eggs. It's not even nice. They gave us eggs. It's yelling at you. <laughs> so yeah. We left it open too long. Wow, the alarm. Yeah. Do you remember what to do? Yeah, you hit the yeah. down arrow button. Down arrow button for turning it's it It'll stabilize. And the beautiful thing about this is I don't have to pay attention to it for 21 days. All I have to do is fill the water. Cool. Which is cool. That's yeah. nice. And we've got the camera up here to monitor it from the house. Mark and his cameras. Yeah. <laughs> well, because we've had, we've had once where water. it did yeah. fail so and it shut down. That. And it was actually this switch here that it's half the switch nice. failed they and shut so down the heaters. So, so it's good to, yeah. good to know. So we were heading up to, or getting ready to head up to the house and we had a couple people stop in that we were actually expecting uh, that has a rabbit. Uh, so they were bringing a rabbit in. Apparently he is six years old uh, and he is a Flemish giant. And here he is here. So his name is Big Bunny, <laughs> that's it. Uh, so he was living in just a, a three by four foot uh, section and they felt, they felt that, well, he needs something a little bit more. Hey bud, hi Big Bunny, hi Big Bunny. <laughs> so we're gonna keep him in the barn here for the time being and likely put him outside uh, in with the other area when it warms up. Now that that's done, it's time to move on to the next thing, and that is a sprouting class. So we're having, uh, in a couple hours, we're having about 28 or 30 people come out, and one of, or two of the people, are from a company called Fresh Forage that do microgreens here in Manitoba. So it's going to be a sprouting class, uh, just going over a few things. We did a small one uh, a couple months ago, uh, but this one is going to be, it was actually the Swede Swap, slash sprouting class, but this one's actually going to be all about uh, sprouting uh, greens. This tray set is from PV. Okay. And the way it works, you do it right on your counter. The way it works is these stack, there's little holes, and sometimes roots come through, there's little holes in it. And then what happens is you, every day, twice a day, put water on the top, I sit this on top, drips through, and then next time you do it again. And that's what makes it grow into a little, because you're just adding water to the top and it's going through. They do suggest you switch it up so that you don't end up with one always tasting the same because they're running through each other, so give it variety kind of thing. Um, so that's, these are really cool. These are sunflowers. I ate them all last time before they got too big. <laughs> They taste just like sunflower seeds. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. 
and they're cheaper online. Oh, okay. I tried to get a whole yeah. bunch here for today. I would have bought one for sure. Yeah, I know. I've seen anything like that. I've been yeah. using jars. Yeah, that's yeah. how we do all ours. So, that. Yeah. Just with the mesh yeah. on yeah. top. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's radish. So those are really, really good. Those are probably one of our top sellers for in the microgreen format. And uh, it, also, it's a generational thing. We have a lot of uh, people that are coming to us in their 80s and 90s that they can no longer. Uh, it's too hot. Arthritis mm, and but they want that taste. Now they can open up a package and they're putting the microgreens right onto their sandwich, right into the, like how they used to do it. And oh, those are. Ooh, that's good. Isn't it? Ooh. Like to die for it. That is amazing. Is just a cup, just a cup. I want to give you the beans because you probably had them on the beans. Which ones are these? I'm giving you the peas and the lentils one. Because um, the other one is mung beans. The mung beans is, I mean, a lot of you have probably had the mung beans. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm giving you all the same one right now. This is the peas and lentils. This one, there's a lady at the St. Norbert's Farmer's Market that takes uh, avocado and whatever kind of spice that she has, smears it on a toast, and then she takes their radish there and puts it on top for a little more zip and a little more cup to it. And it's, she's always got a line up in front of her stuff. So it was a pretty busy weekend loading the eggs in the incubator. So we're going to be doing updates on those as the videos and weeks go by. The microgreen sprouting greens class uh, was a great success. And that sprouting contraption that we have, uh, I put a link down in the description. Because I know last time we had that out, I had a bunch of people asking, uh, where can you buy that? Uh, so we buy it from PV Mart here in Canada, uh, but you can buy it directly from, I believe directly from the manufacturer, and I'll put that link down in the description below. Uh, right after I upload this video, you should see a link up here in the description of this video for the live stream, something a lot of you have been waiting for. Uh, and so we'll have that live stream running. Likely the mamas will be due probably in around close to the second week of April. Uh, who knows, things could change, um, but uh, you can watch it there. Until next video, I hope you have a wonderful week and we'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>